Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Troublemaker. This is the War Game Cup 2012 brought to you by UGen Systems. And we have a great match today. A great, great, great match today. Today we have a match between the NATO player, Cloud Kicker, and his opponent, the pack player, Light KK. And I was actually lying. I have no idea whether this is a great match or not. You are as blind as I am. We have four transport helicopters on the map for L Light NK already. And he has three commands on the map. So might see something a little bit different from light nk could be a very high income game and from cloud kicker early on we're seeing some lots of anti-aircraft vehicles going for this leopard 2a4 actually a couple of them some recon units and uh hmm we'll have to see what he has to do with these he's picking up a high variety of units uh, this map does have a, a little bit of a tank anti-tank anti-air dynamic in that it's got lots of giant open fields for them to fire on and there's not a terribly high amount of areas where infantry are particularly useful there is this little bush here and there's this bush here and then pretty much all these forested areas they do fine in but you have to kind of craft the scenario for that so that they're, it's a little bit hard to do infantry here generally speaking people who are doing infantry on this map are fairly all in and so three commands here for light and k we'll have to see what he's going to do with this uh from from Cloud Kicker, he has two commands, and let's see if he can punish the third command from Light NK. Transport helicopters are already going to go around the flank. I like these kind of maneuvers myself. I would drop them like right here-ish, somewhere around here, or maybe like even right here would be good, and then just slowly creep up and he'll never see it coming. I think they're quite effective. Uh, now, whether or not we will see Cloud Kicker actually punish this greediness from Light and K is questionable. Uh, it is a very greedy play to take this many bases at the start. On the map this big, two is pretty acceptable, three is pretty scary. Um, and the, the window of punishing is not going to be very large. Uh, Weasel MK20, very, very bad on fuel. I would not suggest getting this vehicle at all costs. And we're going to see another transport helicopter actually try to come in and um, block reinforcements here. And whoa, also Cloud Kicker has made the decision to actually grab a third command armor. Now he does have a superior number of forces on the map, so he can actually move towards middle and take middle, which is exactly what he's doing. He's actually moved the command armor as he's attacking. Kind of scary. We see the VPZU is coming in with some, uh, and I have been corrected on this. anti-tank rockets yeah I learned stuff all sorts of stuff and the VPZ is an exact position I'm talking about what infantry can do they're in this position where they have the rocket capacity to strike at vehicles coming by and because of these weird little uh, uh, force here they create kind of a bottleneck for the VPZU to fire into and in order to wipe this out it can get to be quite expensive and if he moves his command armor here beforehand, he could be in trouble. He might go for hotel though, it's a much safer location. And it would actually give him a uh, an infantry striking point for golf. And no, he's actually gonna go for a middle. Oh my god, he's a madman. He's bringing in the recon. Of course, the VPZ is a recon as well, so he's not gonna gain any recon invisibility advantage here. Optics not only affect how well you see people, but also how well you can be seen. And so generally speaking, recons have a, a, a small advantage in a lot of engagements in that you have to be a lot closer to see them. And, and so we're still at zero points right now. No real exchanges have occurred. Tunguskas are being rallied across the map. Of course, the fear of, of helicopter all-ins are very high on this map specifically. And the commander will in fact be flying over to hotel. Two infantry carriers have been rallied into the woods location here by Light NK and also deploying some recons, want some eyes. He's using it on corners, which is very smart. And he's got some conquers in these big giant open areas to punish any sort of vehicles. Um, both players play very safe, but here we go. First engagement of the entire matchup. And it looks like a clear win for Cloud Kicker. But whoa, 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 whoa. He's actually getting pushed back by the BMP 20s. The Moto Strelke are down. He's going to rally in some Saracens to help deal with this. And here comes another group of. of of units and some BMPs and some motor trucks. So it's a battle for the woods. 
and Cloud Kicker taking a significant lead from that engagement with this random Fusilier squad. And, and now it gets awkward. You still be battling for this woods. This woods location is quite key. If you can stage some some infantry, maybe on the edges here, or in the woods here, you have a great opportunity for sniping up these commands. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. If you can set up the play in such a way where you're dealing with the woods, infantry can be quite good. And in fact, the Fusilier squad is still doing very well. Another motor stroke B squad is moving along the outskirts, going to create a flanking pattern. And another group of Saracens are going to be moved in. Fusiliers here are going to try and whip up this BMP to one the infantry vehicle and gets the kill. And now it's a complete flank. Now the Fusilier definitely has to die. There's no way you can survive this. There are some Saracens here, but they seem to be pretty low on fuel. And in fact, it appears very slowly and courageously, one height at a time. The Motor Strokies will in fact take out the Swissier squad. Uh, they're repositioning again. They have temporarily lost vision and the Fusilier is on load again. And uh, actually for Cloud Kicker to save this, he could actually just turn off all his weapons and run away. Um, I believe the optics on the Fusilier is quite high. The optics is normal and the Motor Strokie it is non-existent. So you're looking at two units with close to similar but Fusiliers have a slight advantage. And he will lose this Fusilier squad. He's done quite a bit of damage with it though, so it's paid off in full. And um, looks like a, a, a fourth command armor coming out for Light NK. He's playing very greedily. He does have a very solid flank. And very fortunately for him, Light NK is not playing it with a focused approach. If he, Light NK could play with a fo very, very focused approach right now. And by that, I mean he can just hone in on one location and smash through. Both players opting to take this middle location. The Spetsnaz is blocking reinforcements here. However, there is no longer a reinforcement point. He can keep the Spetsnaz there. It's not a big deal. He might try and take that point back in the future. And now the all-important Spetsnaz point is actually going to be right here at Hotel. He does have some Spetsnaz in the woods here, which are actually pretty low on ammo, which implies that they've been doing quite a bit of damage. There's a gazelle flying overhead. Might be able to snipe out this Spetsnaz if I can find it. And it just doesn't have the visibility, doesn't have the range. Uh, both players are taking the center locations, which means this will be a very, very high point game. And we're going to get to see a lot of units that we haven't been seeing in this tournament. Like, maybe tanks? But probably helicopters? <laughs> like... Uh, Cloud Kicker running away with these Saracens, getting chased away by these Scots, and he's going to go straight into the woods after this group of Motos Strelokis. He's got to unload before he passes by them. This is pretty significant, and he's actually going to stop and slide into the woods. Completely under the cover of night. Uh, here comes some tanks, and this is, you know, like it's high point game, so we're going to see a lot of tanks. Tank destroyers as well. These are conquerors, not particularly well armored. Uh, usually need the support of, of, of tanks or heavily armored uh, anti-tank weapons and they'll probably get sniped out and they do and it looks like as part of uh, Cloud Kicker's strategy so he's going to slowly creep up with these tanks and just clear the fields uh, it looks like for for Light NK he's going to want to focus a little more on these jungles and he's going to try and play a little bit of a jungling strategy in which he tries to come down here and remove the command armor from this point. And these two strategies are pretty counter each other. Basically, if these tanks can push middle and not get this five point pattern, it gives Cloud Kicker a pretty significant lead. If this infantry is able to get to this command armor and force it out, there's currently there'd be no supply point for um, light and gay. Or for uh, Cloud Kicker, sorry. And that gave him a pretty huge disadvantage. And even that kind of tactic, uh, there was a game a couple of days ago featuring this where a player removed a reinforcement point from the enemy and this went crazy all in, just swarming on enemies and just sending units in places to prevent him from getting other new new reinforcement points. And so uh, Cloud Kicker finally getting this Moto's Chiloki here. And. Um, 
might go for this BMP 20 as well. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure he knows it's there. The sneaky VPC, you just slowly move him through woods. It can actually just go by all these fusiliers. If it can actually get the sh these sh the shrapnel here, it will pay itself off. Um, it's always worthwhile to get rid of anti-air units because that just causes your opponent to get more anti-air units. We see a tank in the jungle, which is kind of odd. Uh, the tank, of course, going up against this a BMP unit with the Conquer rockets, and um, it doesn't quite have the accuracy of the normal anti-tank teams. So this should be a, a clear-cut win for this nice little glass cannon. Ooh, ooh, big actual loss there, and he's pulling back. That is scary. Those Conquer rockets are something fierce, and when they actually hit, they're something fierce. There's a waste cell MK20 here in the woods pushing the VPZ out. And he's actually forced to pull his command because of how close in striking distance he is with all this. Oh, I need to sneeze. Here we go. Little bit of pause. All right. We see three artilleries coming out here for light NK. And he's going to try to do a little bit of spray and pay. He's got a th uh, spray and pray. That's a first person shooter terminology. And three uh, other artilleries here. So he's going to rely on a lot of lucky hits. Speaking of not lucky hits, we see a mortar carrier here for, or two mortar carriers here for uh, Cloud Kicker, who's shelling out the location that's being shelled from. I don't know why so many people do this. Oh well. The Amex 30 BTs trying to move across the map. There's a command not being used right now, and there's a command being used here, so. We're going to see a pretty massive point lead for Light NK. And here we go. VPZ is finally getting used here. Going against Marder VTSIs and a Saracen carrier. This VPZ should be destroyed right now. And in fact, it's going down to nothing. It's done trying to run away. This was actually just a really lucky hit for uh, Cloud Kicker. Mostly because he's using units in a very unusual manner. You usually don't see Marder VTSIs uh, jungling. Jungling is not something you want not infantry doing and usually it makes for infantry versus infantry vehicles or infantry versus infantry bat battles infantry versus infantry anti-infantry vehicles and flamethrower tanks usually are the only tanks that get involved with jungling mostly because they use the fire position command and they can just uh area of effect attack people down so yeah he does have the fob too so, wait no he doesn't he doesn't at all this is actually a lot of artillery uh, an FOB here for Cloud Kicker though, which can be stolen. And these helicopters are actually still useful because they have ammunition. Not going to get used though. Spetsnaz almost out of ammunition, still not caught. Like that's the madness. And these VPs used. No, there's actually more units coming here. They actually completely wiped out those Martyr VTSIs, and they might get some free pot shots off at these Saracens before they can unload their cargo. The grenades will go off very very soon, and here they go gets a free kill on these Saracens and I just don't know what's going on here. Here comes the deployment, the Fusilier squads are down, the Modus Junkies are rooted before the Fusiliers are even deployed. The Fusiliers are kind of come in here and wipe out this dirty VPZU communist squad. Sweet communists. Fusiliers coming over from around the back flank and it will be mostly cleaned up. Motos Junkie still rooted. And the VPs use, yeah, they're totally done. They're done. Stick a fork in it. They're done. And generally speaking, when you play this style, you're gonna see a lot of jungle. A lot of jungle. It might be wise for um, late indicate to actually increase the veterancy of some of these infantries, get higher quality ones because um, he's got a lot of money and seemingly. He's been spending a lot of it on artillery. And he's been using it to shower out the central location. Uh, I don't always pull the commander back. It's actually not taking a single hit. There's one hit take after it pulled back. And more jungling. More jungling. We have some infantry carriers running in and wiping out some fusiliers. There are some Marjorie TSIs to support. And here we go. Fusiliers jumping on top of these B20s. Destroys the carriers immediately and kills the fusilier squad. It's possible that that actually might become a thing. Um, people getting more expensive carriers for the anti-tank abilities of it uh, because anti-tank weapons on infantry carriers would be very functional the downside is it costs more there is some Amex OPs here probably gonna try and shower out these woods 
very smart to clear that out. Uh, imp artillery, of course, are the big counter to infantry. And um, yeah, there's actually a big push coming in here for a cloud kicker, though. Lots of tanks, lots of brawns, lots of rise patents, a single supply truck, and a recon. Oh, and this gazelle here. Can't forget this gazelle. He might try to actually break somewhere, and there's lots of places on this map that he can break through. There are these Conquer rocket firing BMP 20s, which I think I might have underestimated. No, I, I did not underestimate them. They're they're about as crappy as I thought they'd be, but they can get lucky, and luck is pretty good. <laughs> Look at all these Jupiters slowly creeping through the woods. And a sub oh, the Wee Sailor MK20 is. What's the same action to fire on? I'm Please tell me it's right here. Oh my god, he's not firing right there. He's actually going to go fire on this position here. I'm trying to get this command armor here, I see. And here we go BMP20 versus Martyr ETSIs. The BMP20 is going to go down. There's a lot of supporting vehicles here coming along the flank. And. This Amex 30B is actually spanking these motor but here comes the Conqueror's rockets. Gonna completely hurt this Amex 30. Oh my god, one goes down. One goes down. Light NK is actually just spanking his opponent right now. Getting some pretty significant key kills here. And he might be able to get this other this vehicle here before it's able to get out. It was a pretty early win for Cloud Kicker to be declared. But now we see that there is a comeback coming in and this push will actually decide realistically the fate of the whole game because there's not really a lot of pushes in this game and whoa 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 here's a big push vpzus versus saracens all these empty jupiters rushing through the open getting sniped down by these bmps and this is gonna be kind of a problem this is the reinforcement point the only reinforcement point out there for cloud kicker if he doesn't defend this reinforcement point he is so screwed he will not be able to reinforce anywhere and this will allow his opponents to chip away at him very easily there's a lot of infantry coming in but cloud kicker is reinforcing with some we sell mk20s and lots of infantry and that's what he needs to do he might even think about moving his command armor because this is a scary number of forces here these BMPs have been left behind. I'm not sure why. Maybe to strike across the field. But here we go. The Wee Sails are coming in to help deal with this. And this is exactly what's to be done. He has to make sure not to creep, plump up these Wee Sails too much or he's going to take immense grenade damage. And the Moto Strelkies are doing insanely high amounts of damage with grenades. They are now stunned. But they continue to do a lot of damage. And will continue until... He's able to split them up, and boom, all the Wii Sails are down. This reinforcement point is mostly screwed. There are some Saracens and Fusiliers, but really not enough. This is, count them, 70 infantry units. And now we have BMPs actually going to move across the open field, try to deal a little bit of damage, try to get this Amex 30B. It looks like it's already caught an Amex Ophi, which is pretty significant. And anything else it grabs is going to be huge. And suddenly, Light and K is completely back in the game. We're going to wait for this Fusilia squad as well, at cost. And anything at this point that gets rallied out by Cloud Kicker is going to be in trouble. Now, what's he going to do? Just a question. Light and K back in the game. And we see actually going to go for some recon helicopters and gunships this is an unusual but it's a appropriate solution you can slowly whittle these away with helicopters but bmps are actually moving across the map the command armor is slowly trudging ways it's tracked in mud and is available to be picked off from an inverted flank which doesn't exist right now poor weapons jam and um he might actually have to only rally in helicopters for quite some time the motor still keep moving across the map um, helicopters coming in to intercept these BMPs, knock them out. He might want to grab this Jupiter back. Quite an embarrassing snag. And, ooh, he's stunned. He's taking damage. These BMPs are actually firing on them. And... Might make it. Martyr VTSI coming to intercept. And here we go. Martyr VTSI should be enough to clean this up. Cloud Kicker maintains his lead, but it's not looking good. 
a Spetsnaz randomly killed something here. We're now three points of difference. More of these VMP-20 loaded vehicles coming around. He still has his infantry here blocking reinforcements. And all poor little Cloud Kicker is going for him is his, his helicopters with this recon helicopter. He doesn't have a lot coming out. The command number was pulled. Now it's being pushed back into position. He's going to slowly maneuver these infantry around, try and get at this command armor. Kind of scary. Also, this, this Spetsnaz is actually moving into position to wipe out um, this commander. And Cloud Kicker doesn't see this coming. And apparently, <laughs> Light NK has a pretty good idea of where this command armor is. And speaking of, here comes the big all-in to end all-ins. So this is going to be the final battle. If Light NK can completely devour this push, he'll be in a very good position. If he cannot... Be in trouble. The Martyr VTSI should of course be leading this charge, it's quite the armored vehicle. And there's a lot of tanks here for, for Light NK to kill. Light NK is actually doing a very good job of dealing with this. He's now up 600 points. He has tanks coming from all corners. The, the Conqueror should be pulled of course to this side to help deal with this. And there also are some gunship helicopters as well that have been successfully picking at units. And this has actually been completely shut down. We're now seeing a very significant lead for Light NK. As it's getting closer and closer to end, it appears Light NK is going to win. And oh my god, the Spetsnaz is chasing down this command vehicle. The command vehicle is completely panicked. There is a gazelle trying to snipe at the Spetsnaz. But oh my god, he just probably is going to get this command vehicle. Uh, he's firing artillery on this location, hoping that will help. Uh, final rocket shot. Looks like the commander will escape. But now he's lost the India location. On top of that, there are some infantry completely planted on the reinforcement point, so there'll be no brand new units. Any unit that comes out will be immediately killed by these Moto Studaki. There is a, a a flank of infantry coming forward with their anti-rocket infantry carriers, trying to get at the command member that's no longer here. I think he actually killed it, and I missed that. Uh, Pushed back by these Cobras. But it turns out that Light NK is in a very, very good position. In fact, there is no command armors in play right now. The center command armor is dead. It's been killed, and I missed it. The Spetsnaz in the woods is keeping this command armor from, from doing anything, and he might actually get the kill right here. He's been using artillery fire to pound this. There is Namex Roland 2 coming in, and of course it can't do anything because it has radar rockets, which don't really do anything against uh, land units. So this is slow and depressing. To kill such a heavily armored unit, he actually, if he can move his spets and that stuff, he can just get the command armor right now. Or even this rolling two, either one will be worthwhile to me. Like, I would take either kill. And uh, both are actually stunned. I don't know why he moved the rolling two into the artillery fire, but that's what he did. Keep in mind, even though this is round four, like the there are going to be some lower level players that are still in the game. And so now we're down to one command armor. Nope, that is apparently it because I am not paying attention to all the command kills of the game. And yeah, these uh, these ELO ratings make sense. So we have a victory for Light NK. He'll move on to the next round. Hopefully face someone a little bit harder. We're getting to round of roughly 64 people. And uh, in that round, you'll be seeing a lot of weak play get eliminated. My name has been Trollmaker, and I'd like to thank you guys for watching. See you guys tomorrow.